Andreas. Hi, Andreas. Uh, on the left, I see Max, and here's Andreas. Uh, well, how did you do over here? It was great. Great stuff, great crowd. Much better support than we have in Germany. Uh, we're very satisfied, man, very happy and tired. <laughs> now, I just told that this tribal aspect, uh, especially in the song Rata Mahata, you invited uh, the drummer of Doggy Dog. Yeah. Um, did the tribal aspect change your attitude towards your own music? I don't know. I think we're changing step by step throughout the years. Sepultura is a band who is together for more than 10 years, and we've been playing every kind of place. So I think we just want to bring some new influence to our music and nothing more natural than the Brazilian music. We are from Brazil and we know how to play those instruments, so we start working more on that. And the tribe for sure, you know, change a lot of the ideas that we have from the Indians, you know. A lot of people think they're stupid or something, they're fools, but they're very intelligent. They know what they want, you know, they live in freedom like they want and they have the respect of the white culture in Brazil, which is very good, you know. So it was a great experience to record the whole Roots project. You know, we have a lot of guests, including the tribe and stuff. And now we are happy to be here to show our music live, you know, which is the best for us. I told you earlier that uh, the percussionist Di Carlinhos Brown, who in the studio has played with him, that he uh, um, uh, the aspects of the music of Sepultura has added. And I asked aan Andreas, uh, one of the leaders of Sepultura, of that hun eigen mening naar hun muziek ook veranderd heeft. Het was een uh, boeiende ervaring om met die mensen te, te spelen, maar ze kenden natuurlijk dat tribal aspect kenden ze al lang, want ze komen uit Brazilië en het vooroordeel dat veel mensen hebben over Indianen dat ze dom zijn, dat geldt voor hun. Dat wil, daar willen zij absoluut niet van weten. Nou, um, this um, this place, Pink Pop, is a festival where normally a lot of rock bands are. Do you feel at home in um, well, a rock situation instead of a hard rock or heavy metal situation? I think we feel home whatever the people like our music, you know. I, I don't like to, to label the music and even the fans, you know. I think they're all there enjoying all the bands and if you don't like the back, just the band that play and go, just go in the back, drink some beer and stuff. That's what I like about festival, you know. Everybody respects each other's styles and everybody enjoy everything, you know. For us, the same to play with different bands, you know, like Rage Against the Machine and Therapy or Alanis Morissette, you know. So it's totally different and it's good for us to show our music for different people. A lot of people never heard about Sepultura here, so it's a good chance to show our music for them. Over the uh, I vroeg uh, aan Andreas of hij zich thuis voelt op de poster van Pink Pop, waar een heleboel rockbands staan, waar soms zelfs ook hele gevoelige klanken te horen zijn. Je gelooft het niet, maar het is echt zo. En uh, toen zei hij, ja, wij voelen ons hier wel degelijk thuis, want we hoeven niet alleen gelabeld te worden als een heavy metal of hard rock band. Nou, Andreas, one more thing. Uh, over the past five, six, seven years, we had a boom on acoustic music. Is it imaginable that this band, your band, should do the things acoustically? Well, we've been doing that, like, with more the Brazilian, you know, music, the very traditional Brazilian music, like Caioas and Hata Mahata, or uh, the song we did with the tribe, it's sorry. And that's the way we like to use acoustic, you know, not in the melodic uh, or, you know, lovely way or whatever, you know. We like to use acoustic in a very heavy and dark moody. And we've been doing that. And for us, you know, never say never, you know. We can do whatever in the future and uh, whatever we like it, you know, so. I don't know, I see Sepultura doing a lot of different stuff in the future, for sure. Dus ook dat is een mogelijkheid voor Sepultura, dat ze dingen klein houden, maar dan meer bijvoorbeeld op het tribal aspect gaan zitten. En uh, ja, eigenlijk heel andere muziek gaan maken. Uh, my last question, Andreas. Uh, is this the kind of audience you, well, you want, or well, do you want more, a louder audience? Well, we always want more, but I'm pretty satisfied with the audience of today. It was really good. Okay, thank you very much. Zangerbassist. Zangerbassist van Gorefest. Ja. En naast hem zit Max, die net klaar is. He just finished the show. I'm from Holland. Yes, I can see that, man. I was supposed to be playing a game, but they, they told me to come here and do a show first. It was a pretty I'll do good on the next World Cup. It was a pretty impressive show, I thought. It's a great crowd. Yeah, man, it went down really well. Yeah, I must say I was a little bit nervous before, because we heard this is a pop festival. Yeah. You know, pink pop and that the crowd not gonna like us, you know. Mm -hmm. It was the opposite. Was yeah, the best shows. They loved it. They all yeah. came up from the Dynamo, I think. Well, oh, let uh, me explain. Let me explain. From there, you know? <laughs> uh, er is nog een ander festival in Nederland. Dat is uh, net geweest eigenlijk in Eindhoven. Dynamo Air Open Air Festival. Daar spelen voornamelijk meer het soort bands, ja, als Sepultura. Gorefest, jouw eigen band. Yeah. Uh, jullie hebben gisteren aan gespeeld. Uh, zaterdag. Of zaterdag. Hoe zaterdag. was het daar? Fantastisch. Ja. ja. We gingen uh, op. 
Eigenlijk een kwartier voordat het donker uh, werd. Dus eerst konden we 80.000 mensen zien en later kregen we hun de lichtshow. Het was echt overweldigend. Ja? Dat was fantastisch. Ja. Ja. Wat is een belangrijk optreden voor jullie, had ik begrepen. Toch? Ja, toch wel het belangrijkste ja. uit onze carrière. Ja, zo. So. Ja. En ik denk dat we het heel goed gedaan hebben. Ja, oh, mooi. Ja, I'm just, uh, he's just telling a little bit about how it went for their band, Gorefest, uh, in the Dynamo Open Air Festival. You, you played there before. Twice, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. One which dif different band. With Sepultura, the first time, uh, one of the first times we came to Europe. Mm. And it was great. And then with Nail Bomb again. And that wasn't so great. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's just... You were playing in Nail Bomb? No. Yeah. Oh. We did only one show. Oh, I see. It was too many problems and... Oh. It's not my original band, and you know, it's it's more like a studio band. I see. Okay. Live, it doesn't go as strong as Sepultura. Right. Let so. me let me explain shortly. He has just taken up the name about a girl about this this style of singing that you both do, grunting, it's called. And the girl said, uh, "You're not gonna last for more than six years if you sing like that." What do you think? I have to worry about other things to last six years. Oh. My vocals is my last thing I have to worry. Is that so? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your. It's your instrument. Well, you know, I'll tell you, people can never predict, you know, uh, how can people predict music? I mean, I always say that the biggest bands, I think, on the beginning, they were uh, criticized because they were too different. But there's the one that lasts longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I'm going to last longer with my own style than if I'm imitating yeah. James Hatfield or Axl Rose. Mm -hmm. But I did, he, she didn't mean like uh, in a commercial way, but also with the voice, that the voice is going to crack up at some point. Or what do you, or you have a technique. Have you a technique? Let me, let me ask Jan Chris. Have you, have you a technique? Or do you have your stem not beschadigd als je op die manier? Yeah, it, uh, you sing out your buik. And I belast my stembanden not so veel. I have toevallig for the opnames van the last plaat, I've been six by a zangleres geweest. Yeah. Now, and he told me that my stem. Heel goed in orde was. Ja? Het trilde allemaal heel keurig in de hoge regionen. Het is een, ja, het is een, een kunstje, een truc. Iets wat als het pijn zou doen, dan, dan doe je het niet. Het, het volume komt uit je buik en, en de stem is, is, ja, vormt het enkel. Hmm. Just ask Lemmy. Lemmy, yeah. Lemmy from Motorhead. Ja, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. he's probably one of the originators. The godfather of the growling. Ja. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just style, you know. And Everybody has, there's, there's some other that are not uh, deep like ours, but they're high, like perhaps Pantera or White Zombie or even uh, the Sex Pistols, you know. Uh -huh. Each one has a different style. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, it's hard to predict the future, but I think kids tend to identify more with these vocals today than they did years ago. Yeah, definitely. They understand the lyrics, they sing along, you can see, mm -hmm. even if it's screaming. It's more about the attitude of the singing, the actual melody. I'm you got you got an attitude, you have it, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, I'm sure a lot of kids are watching right now. They and they they're like curious. How do you how do you start singing like that? Can you just can the two of you just explain a little bit? Well I started after I watch uh, Venom. Start listening to bands like Venom and Hellhammer yeah. back in the eighties. Goed voor jou ook? Ja. Hij luisterde naar Venom, begin, begin jaren tachtig? Ja, ik, andere bands, maar wel dezelfde, dezelfde beweegreden. Hm. Je vond het fantastisch. Because you were a fan. That's, ja, ja. that's what you said. The thing is, the Kronos, it was so easy to imitate. All you gotta do is like, force your voice a little bit and you have it. Ja. And the other guys in town were trying to imitate Bruce Dixon from Iron Maiden. Now that's hard. Ja. You know, imitate Kronos was easy. So we started just like that, you know, it was really easy. <laughs> and then it had to be a professional. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not one. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're doing pretty good. Well, but there's no techniques, you know. There's do, no techniques? I do very, very little. What, what do you do technisch? A little bit warm. Yeah? Very little. There is no one who can learn it, because this is the first generation who it does. Yeah. Can you let me hear something your volume? What you normally do when you sing? Nee. nee. Het is niet een instrument wat je even kan aanslaan. Nee, oh, je moet, jawel, je bent niet maar opgewarmd. dat niet gepast, nee. 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 Oké, okay, doe je gepast. Did you, did you guys know each other's music before? You just I met their, here. I know their stuff. Gorefest, you know? It, yeah. yeah, I have it because I, I, I buy all kinds of CDs. Mm -hmm. I'm a CD maniac. So anything that comes out and is new, I just go in the shop and yeah. try to get it. Try to keep updated with new music as much as with old, you know. Mm -hmm. Ja, hij vertelt dat hij... Uh, uh, nou ja, Jan Christ wil niet, wil niet even voordoen hoe die grunt, maar dat houden we nog van hem te goed. Ooit, anders koop je maar een plaat van Gorefest. En uh, Max van Sepultura kende de band wel degelijk. 
Eh, uh, Gorefest. Want jullie doen het eigenlijk heel goed in het buitenland, heb ik begrepen toch? Je verkopen, nou ja, duizenden, weet ik veel, tienduizenden cd's daar. Ja. So that's nice. Oké, okay, um, thank you very much. You both have nice tattoos. Those are, die zijn nieuw, hè? Toch? Uh, this is een jaar oud ongeveer. Huh? Dit is ja, ongeveer een jaar oud. De vorige keer dat ik je ontmoet had je die nog nee. niet. Nee. <laughs> jullie gaan niet naar dezelfde... Actually, I still want one from him. Oh, you don't have oh? one? Oh. Nee? So if he's watching that, uh, no, maybe no, one day he'll give me one. <laughs> he gave Andreas, the other guitar player. Yeah? Yeah. He did my arm. Yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah? What is this actually? Can I even see? Wat is, de, wat is de afbeelding? Ja. Ja, ja. Dat is een uh, verhaal op zich, maar dat moet jij even vertellen. Did you just ask what's the meaning? Ja, yeah. yeah, what's the meaning? Ja, goed. Ja, wat Now what it, yeah, what it represent? Uh, it is allemaal freestyle van Henk. Oh ja? Yeah? It's, it's like all freestyle. You just go in and give him the, the rough idea and he just did it. I think that's But you have, you have specific uh, figures here on your... I got Shiva here for a couple years ago with my son's show, show name. Oh yeah. Why do you, why do my you choose? My son's name, I need to do my other son's name here, Igor. Uh-huh. But I have to get from the same tattoo artist, so I'm waiting. Each one of them has a meaning, you know? Mm. Tattoo is like music. Why, why do you have these, by the way? Well, from the, I went to the tribe with Sepultura last year mm -hmm. to record, and this is the kind of painting that they do. I just got very influenced by the whole tribal artwork and uh, cultural. I'm really into tribalism, mm. so I just decided that um, since I went there and I lived with them for three days, and and I got so connected to their roots, why not put it in my mm. skin? Let me translate. Yeah, yeah. He is a month of three by the Brazilian Indian geweest, ook om een aantal platen opname te maken, en dat is daar kennelijk een gewoonte om ook hier te tatoeëren. Dat vond hij mooi en heeft hij ook laten doen. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks a lot. It was a great show. I'd like to thank the, all the fans there that are watching. Them. Yeah. The best fans, you know, one of the best in the world. It's no doubt in here. Okay. Thanks for giving us a great time.